Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Crimson Panda here, back with another Mercenaries Priority Upgrade Guide. Now, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at fighters. So if you guys obtain a new fighter and you are unsure of what to upgrade, then hopefully this guide is going to help you out. Um, if it does, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and also to support the channel even further, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. So with that being said, let's dive straight into these mercenaries, these fighters that we're going to prioritize. Okay, so first up we have Belinda. Now Belinda is a very, very strong mercenary. She has seen tons of play thanks to her frost abilities and she is going to continue to see play with frost. She's a very good mercenary in PvE as well, being able to summon a lesser water elemental in order to freeze out some of the um, adds in the PvE lineup. But as far as PvP, just being able to freeze stuff with the lesser water elemental is kind of what belinda is there to do so the priority equipment by far is definitely the lesser water elemental this will be the first one you want to be upgrading and then as of the equipments you're going to want uh, the ability sorry you're going to want to be going flamed up first of all and then you're going to want to be going for frost burn and then frost dark the reason being Flame Dart is very good in the PvE, being able to combo with the fire comps. Um, also, given the frost weakness, uh, it's the quickest one out of the lot, so you're probably going to be using that more than ever. Um, frost Dart isn't even really used that much in the PvP frost matches. You're still going to be doing the Flame Dart just because it gives them the extra weakness as well on frost. So, that is what you would do with this mercenary. Um, after, you would then probably go for the fire element and then the storm spike salvation as well after you've upgraded all of the abilities after you've done that with the lesser water elemental being the priority equipment next up we have blade master samuro so we have seen this mercenary a lot he was one of the very first strong mercenaries in the game so if you're a new player you can see that he is already probably one of your best mercenaries that you have and the upgrading abilities and equipments is a little bit difficult with this one because you're doing it early and you kind of want to be using it for pve in those early stages so what i would suggest is that you go for the burning blade for the pve so whenever he attacks he gains 2-2 which is absolutely huge in the early bounty games and then you have your double strike being your main attacking because it's the only one off cooldown and you're always going to open up with blade master samurai so i would definitely go for double strike on your first upgrade and then once you get him to enough a high enough level that's when you can start working on your mirror image being your second ability you want to start going for and then the sass of illusions for those pvp matches as well being able to make a copy with sam is very very strong on pvp um if you was to use him in a comp that is viable with him um the whirling blade is very good as well in pve being able to aoe for 10 can be game changing in those early matches but unfortunately it's not as good as the double strike in my opinion being able to combo this out with another mercenary and then getting a double attack is just really really strong so i would definitely stick with samurai for your pves burning blade double strike then mirror image and whirling blade and then start going for your other equipments after Okay, next up we have one of the newest mercenaries and that is one zombie. Now this mercenary is doing fantastic in PvP at the moment and that is all thanks to how insane his abilities are. So the first thing in my opinion that you should be upgrading is the irrefusable deal. This being able to bounce all of your mercenaries back or making one zombie the target or even just shifting the tide with the speeds is very, very good. Um, you have so many options just from this one ability and then secondly i would go for any of these other two really the soul subjection is really good against those kind of almost mirror matches when you know a one zombie in pvp is going to bounce you can then just take advantage of that by using your own soul submission to deal a little bit extra damage that turn and still get the bounce off in the mirrors so that is why that one is very good and then blinding contract obviously is used in the late game when you know that Zambi's going to die off and you can get a huge payoff with the deal 90 more damage so that would probably be the order i would do it the deal then the soul and then the contract maybe these two kind of simultaneously rotating between the two 
and then as of the equipment you want to prioritize the arena contender because that gives you the ability to do your irrefusible deal constantly because this goes on to cooldown once you've bounced back but then your battle cry is going to refresh it for at least two turns being able to do it again and again which is very very strong and then as of the other two equipments i've used spirit of the dead a few times in a troll build didn't seem very strong but still probably better than a new client where it resurrects one of your mercs because usually when a merc gets resurrected in the late game it's going up against arcane ventures which is just going to snipe it off and get a free kill anyway so that is how one zombie should probably be prioritized in the upgrade situation okay next up we have captain galvagar now he has seen a little bit of pvp play but not really that much only really using him as a tech card for this third ability here where if you're if they've acted and the ability they cast gains three cooldown you can try and deny some late game combos with this so that was really the only reason he was used in pvp other than when he was using this equipment which gives all your characters an additional five attack which he was using quite early on with kazagos and the golems so um this would be still the priority equipment to upgrade so you want to obviously give all your characters extra attack at the start of the game very good with trigor when he was being used so definitely prioritize this equipment over any of the others the others you want to be doing probably last after all of your abilities and when it comes to the abilities you'll probably want to go with render and cleave first of all because this being able to bleed on adjacent enemies if the the um, opponent hasn't acted yet and obviously you get to choose the enemy so if you know the speeds then you know they're not going to act by the time this one gets targeted into them so um you will almost guaranteed get a bleed on at least two mercenaries um after that maybe even go for the shout second so that you can use it to try and deny some late game combos and then go for the fatal strike um there's not many heal comps in the game this would probably only be used in pvp uh, in pve if if anywhere at all dealing eight damage is underwhelming the only thing that it could be good for is maybe comboing out with valera because of the three speed but in my opinion go for the fury and then ability one ability three and then ability two and then the two equipments okay next up we have Cthulhu. now Cthulhu is seeing a ton of play in pvp um, because it is an old god and the old gods are absolutely broken so the way you want to be upgrading Cthulhu is you're going to be wanting to use body of Cthulhu because you're using Cthulhu 90 times 90 percent of the time on the bench um, so you definitely want to be upgrading body of Cthulhu first getting the maximum amount of stats out of that and then as of the abilities you're going to be mind flaying a lot so you're going to want to be upgrading this first and foremost and then you're going to want to go for a mask of Cthulhu for those late game aoe's if you manage to pull it off um the 10 cooldown doesn't really go down very fast with Cthulhu because it's usually one of the last mercs you bring out and then you're going to want to go for the technical Cthulhu after that because you just want to get all of your abilities up when you're fighting in pvp and then as of the other two equipments after your first body of Cthulhu is maxed and your abilities are done you want to go for the heart of Cthulhu battle cry summon a tentacle is better than the battle cry gain four attack and destroy an, a random enemy minion this hasn't seen much play i'm sure it could be good in certain situations because of how many minions there are in the game especially with boggy being quite popular so i could see this working eventually but not at the moment it's the body of Cthulhu, which is just absolutely dominating with Cthulhu. Okay, next up we have Diablo. Now, Diablo is an absolutely nutty mercenary. He has seen tons of PvP in the past. He is still very viable now, but you don't really see it due to the wide amount of mercenaries there are in the game now so um diablo is still a very strong merc and the ones you're going to want to be upgrading first with the equipment you're going to want to go black soulstone after a friendly character dies this merc gains 10 health this is any character so this is minions and mercenaries so as soon as you're going up against a token build or using kazagos for golems he is going to gain health like crazy so this is by far his best equipment the other two don't ever see play so definitely upgrade those last and then as it comes for the abilities if you're using them on the bench you're going to want to be upgrading fire stomp first of all because this is going to be paired out with a very fast speed merc like karen that's going to enable this to do a lot of damage really fast fast and then you're going to want to go for your apocalypse to be able to crit stuff 
um, but if you're using him in the opener or PVE then Doom Charge probably would be worth considering as well because this gets to slow one of the mercs down so if you're going up against a lot of trigal builds then this will be able to slow trigal down so that he can't then backlash on the second turn so um in my opinion definitely start with fire stomp but depending on where you want to use diablo um either on the bench or on the opener you're going to want to basically choose between these two in those situations so if he's a benchmark go for apocalypse if he's going to be in your opener go for doom judge okay next up we have edwin now edwin is probably one of the best pirates in the game because he is in every single pirate build because he enables pirates to be basically competitive so we have black flag here this is the only ability you're going to need with edwin because he is going to speed up your pirates by four which is an insane amount of speed increase for passive so definitely upgrade black flag first and foremost out of all of your equipments as far as the abilities go assassin's blade is probably his most used one um, attack an enemy if they haven't acted yet gain 10 health and attack again you do sometimes get that second attack off um, he doesn't speed himself up he speeds other pirates up so this is always going to stay at five speed so it depends if you know the speeds of their units and if they're not using like anything fast then you can kind of target this into something that is going to guarantee a second attack um, secondly you're going to want to go for assassinated strike this combos out with anything because all of your other pirates are going to be quick and this gains immune while attacking and gains five attack for each friendly pirate and then attacks a random enemy the only reason you would go for assassin's blade over this is because the random enemy kind of messes with you a little bit you want to attack something so that you can kill it off if you're going for some random stuff it's not really as productive or consistent so that is why assassin's blade is first as well as black flag and then go for assassin strike kingpin and then any of the other two equipments as and when you have spare coins for them next up we have elise now elise is probably one of the most played mercenaries in the game at the moment um, she can do so many different things that helps your team and there's so many different ways to play elise as well so the things you're going to want to be upgrading first of all is the oasis canteen passive give your explorers 4-4 four, four at the end of each turn it might not sound big but this is buffing Elise up, keeping her alive, as well as other explorers. Um, and it's just a very solid staple passive, given your stats at the end of the turn. Um, as far as equipments go, you're probably going to want to be doing Gilded Path first. Um, nope, that is a complete lie. You're going to want to go for the quest of the Golden Monkey first, because you're always going to buff your board and bench. So you want the most amount of stats to do that. And then her turn to bleed is going to be dealing 18 damage to everything. So you definitely want that to be maxed out so that you can deal that maximum damage. And then after you've done this ability, you want to go for the Gilded Path. So this can advance the Golden Monkey as well and heal for as much as possible. And then you want to go for your Star Seeker because there are occasions where she's big enough to be able to attack. So you're going to want to be able to gain as much health when you're doing that. Um, and then as of the equipments, you do not want to go for the trinket. You want to go for the monkey pool next because everybody that plays Elise is obviously going to want to try her in a monkey comp. So definitely go for Oasis, Quest for the Golden Monkey, Gilded Path, Star Seekers, and then monkey pool and then trinket. Okay, so next up we have Eudora. Eudora is another pirate. If you have been watching all of this video and not skipped to the Mercenary Agenda upgrade, then obviously Edwin will increase the speed of Eudora, which enables you to be able to coop to it. Apologies for the pronunciation on this Mercenary. There is a lot of weird named abilities. <laughs> but this will go to zero where you attack an enemy, and if it hits the left or right, fire your cannon. So you get cannons at the start of the game because you're going to prioritize this equipment. Battle Cry Summon a 018 cannon. All this is going to do is give the cannon extra health the more you upgrade it. But the more health, the better, obviously, the harder it is to kill from your opponent's side. So you're going to have a cannon on turn one, which gives you four units. This is then going to attack, firing the cannon at the left or rightmost minion, if that is what you've decided to attack. Um, 
as far as the other abilities go you're always going to want to start with ability one and then maybe go for preferred cannons and then covering fire they're not really used you're only really using the first one in specific comps that are being played at the moment um obviously the other two units are used if she survives a lot longer than anticipated but I would definitely go for preferred cannons and then covering fire not the other way around and then as far as the other two equipments go you can just do them whenever you want when you've got some spare coins to to put into them okay next up we have garona now garona is a very new mercenary as well uh the equipment you're going to want to prioritize with garona is shadow step at the end of the turn if you control another merc gain plus four plus five and return this to the bench so kind of like a lease where you get the plus four plus four this is giving you plus four plus five which is obviously better but you get to return her to the bench which means you can reshuffle all of your mercenaries at the end of every single turn so if you know what your opponent is playing, you know you need to move your mercenaries, then you get to do that every single turn, which is crazy. And also, if you don't want to bring her back out, you can bring anything else back out off your bench. So definitely go with Shadow Step. That's why I've done that, and the other two aren't even touched yet. And then you're going to want to go for all of your abilities, and the order you want to do that is go for Shimmering Toxic, because this is going to make you take 12 less damage. You'll become a Protector, and then bounce back to your deck thanks to Shadow Step. Then you're going to want to go for the one in the same, where you discover an ability, because this is going going to discover some nutty orc abilities at some point there's ones that can cleave there's some that buff your board and stuff like that so definitely go for one and the same and then finally go for your slowest one which is smoke and knives now this isn't a bad ability this is still very good you get to attack an enemy and then deal 20 damage to an adjacent one if this isn't a fighter it becomes it and deals 26 instead so it is a very very good ability it's just not being used the way i've seen it especially in pvp where you want to be using the shimmering to prevent damage and then the lineage to try and take advantage of those random uh orc abilities that you discover okay so next up we have illidan now illidan has been played a lot in pvp unfortunately he is one of the older mercenaries so when the new ones come out they kind of overshadow him because of how good they are but the way you want to upgrade him if you've unlocked him is you want to go for ward laser of Azanoth first and foremost this is going to attack the leftmost enemy twice which is huge when illidan can gain stats really really fast um you're going to want to start with your winged assault on the abilities attack an enemy if it's the left or right enemy gain plus five attack so he is going to scale every time he attacks one of the corners um then you're going to want to go for your outcast attack which is attack the left enemy twice right most enemy once death blow restore health so this is where the ward waves comes in you're going to be outcasting which is the middle one so if he comes in off the bench in the late game because you're playing some sort of buff build then the outcast one is obviously going to be a lot better than the winged assault being able to attack three times in one turn with a lot of attack if we buffed him so it's very very strong then obviously go for your blade dance because this will be your last ability that is left to upgrade and then you go for any of the other two equipments the ward glaives is probably the best one i would probably go for razor fist after and then demon shroud because taking 10 less while attacking does sound nice but unless you're outcasting into big stuff you don't need to take the less damage he has enough health when he comes off to be able to just deal stuff and if he gets a kill he restores health anyway so that's how you would want to upgrade illidan okay next up we have king crush now king crush is a very good pve mercenary i mean at least he was until yashiraz showed up but if you don't have Yashiraj, then King Cross is a fantastic substitute for PvE because of the Apex Predator. Attack the lowest health enemy, death blow, gain five, uh, gain 5 health, and repeat this. So you are going to want to focus on doing your Flame Claw so that he has the most attack possible when upgrading this Mercenary. And then you go for your Apex Predator as the first ability. Then into the Devil Saw because this has actually had a buff where it now has charge and no cooldown. So you'll be able to spam this if you're playing a beast build. Um, Terrify doesn't see any any play it doesn't get used gain five attack for each of your beasts and attack a random enemy it's just better to apex predator all the time because you get to hit the lowest health target which gives you the biggest chance of a death blow especially if it starts with 20 attack and then you're going to keep scaling that with other units so um that is the upgrade 
guide for this one you don't really want to be doing i'm using put the devil saw on because i'll try it in a beast build but you don't really want to be doing any of these two until right at the end i would maybe leave fresh meat until the very last and then go with the rocky before you go for that one okay so next up we have lady anaconda now lady anaconda does see play in pvp and it, it plays out in a very specific build where it is a show summon build where you are trying to get your nightmare viper as big as you can so that you can try to have just an absolutely massive massive minion over 80 over 100 attack and health at some points so that is the aim with this mercenary so the equipment you're going to want to use and probably always only use is the signal of the winds battle cry summoning a viper so that gives you the ability to have a viper out and never have to actually summon one yourself or very rarely and you're going to want to prioritize your abilities in that way so that you mend beast which is going to restore 15 health to the viper and to you and obviously gives them 15 health so that means the viper is going to heal and scale at the same time i can't quite remember if you need the viper upgraded to enable this to have the upgraded amount um if you end up start starting on the equipment and then mend beast um it might not go up in any health depending on what your actual viper itself does so if that's the case then upgrade viper so that you can get the most amount of health at the start of the game and then you go for your serpent bite last out of the abilities um if it isn't the case and you end up having a 15 health viper without having to upgrade the viper then go for serpent bite before upgrading the viper and then the other two equipments once you have spare coins and you've got all of the rest upgraded then start going for those two okay next up we have lady vash now i am not a fan of lady vash i have hardly used her in pvp i don't really think it's a very good mercenary at all um there are some upsides to it like you have the reflex shots which deals 12 damage to all enemies it's a nice aoe and if you've already acted or if they've already acted sorry deal crit damage which can be good if you use it in a fell build now i guess because of the fell spell school but it doesn't seem like a very strong mark to me but if you have it and you want to upgrade it then i suggest going for your icy grip where your nagas take four less damage until they act because you're probably going to want to be playing her in a naga build and then i would probably start with the electrify dealing 22 damage to an enemy damage is reduced by the speed of their action but it is still quite a lot of damage then you go for the reflex shot because this is probably going to be in your opener and then deal 12 damage to all enemies and then crit if they're fast so go for that one second and then obviously go for your handmaiden poison last deal five damage to an enemy and bleed them 10 um and then yeah the equipment's just as and when you have the spare coins to upgrade these two i haven't even unlocked this one yet because i just don't think it's worth playing in pvp at the moment so that is the upgrade guide for lady vash okay next up we have one of my favorite mercenaries and that is leroy um, I've actually done a video very recently where I did a fun combo with Leroy using some of the new mercs. If you haven't seen that, I definitely recommend you seeing that because you would probably want to be playing Leroy more than anyone after seeing that video. So uh, the way you upgrade Leroy, um, I did this very differently compared to what I'm going to tell you because once he's new, you just kind of want to get him big and spend all your coins. But the way I would suggest doing it is prioritize ninja looting, passive, gain six attack whenever an enemy dies. Leroy is going to kill a lot of enemies, so he's going to scale pretty fast. And then as of your abilities, you're going to want to go for get chicken so that you can go immune and then Leroy Jenkins second, because after you attack all enemies, ignoring taunt, all characters act randomly uh, in a random order so this is a zero speed so even if they have speed manipulation and they have zero speeds you still have a very good chance of getting this off first which then randomizes all of their quick stuff which is kind of what you want to be doing and if Leroy is big and he's attacking three characters whilst being immune then obviously that is a huge payoff um, I would actually recommend doing Leroy Jenkins first and then the chicken and then you go for your wild swing last it's a good ability like I said with the other mercs but 
it's not as good as the other two when you combo them out. And then you're going to want to go for your heals and your even bigger sword. You're not really using the wild swing, so you don't really need that equipment. And the healing can be beneficial, restoring 8 health whenever health is restored to another character. But it's nowhere near as good as the ninja looting. Okay, next up we have Lord Sliver Spear. So this is another mercenary that I'm not entirely fond with. Um, but I will show you the upgrade guides that I I used in order to try and get him to practice in PvP. So after an enemy summons a minion, refresh enough of this trash will be probably the priority equipment to go for because you're going to want to be doing enough of this trash pretty quickly. And if you can get this off on turn two, then you can get some crazy shenanigans with it if you are playing a Viper build and you get a Viper big. If you do some bouncing back to get him out and it goes to a two speed, then it's pretty fun in order to do that. It's not competitive, it's more meme but you probably want to just be upgrading this almost in order. So attacking an enemy and summoning Naga with Divine Shield and Rush will help in a Naga build. So that's not a bad ability at all. And then you lift bro where you gain five attack. If you control another Naga, gain five more and attack an enemy is kind of good. If you're running in a summon Naga build as well, obviously he summons himself. So there is synergies there, but it's just not very good in PVP. Um, as of the other, other equipments, passive four attack and it always deals crit Crypto Murlocs, four attack is good. Crypto Murlocs, not really necessary, but an okay equipment. And then Naga summoned by Sliver, gain five attack. You don't need them to gain the extra five attack because you're only going to be using this maybe once on the first turn. And then you're going to be hopefully enough of this trash to kill off a, a unit in order to deal AoE damage. But that is kind of the idea of him. And that is kind of the way you should go go for sharp enough the trash rage and then lift bro and the other equipments after okay next up we have murky now murky is a murloc he is a very good murloc because you can enable some ridiculous pve stuff with murky all thanks to march of the murlocs and this is probably the first equipment you're going to want to be upgrading so that you can summon two murlocs at 10 10 so that you can combo it out with a a farming comp which allows you to almost wipe out any board straight away using that comp um, I won't go into what that comp is um, it's out there on YouTube if you do need to find that out so with that being said if you're using this in PvE then you're going to want to upgrade slime time straight away because at full speed you can give anything to on and guarantee the combo um, next up you're going to want to be doing the bubbly because you can bounce this in a pvp comp with other murlocs giving them divine shield protecting them from potentially big threats and you get to repeat it with nature so if you're running it in a nature murloc build then this is obviously going to bounce twice healing three of your units so very very good bubble this is if you're using it for pvp and not pve then i would go for the bubbly first over the slime time but if you're using it for pve then definitely go for slime time first um this obviously is on cooldown so um having slime time deal a little bit more damage at the start is always beneficial um you want to do your puffer fisher last because this isn't really used that often unless you know that you can get the 15 attack or the 15 damage off um with the death rail straight away when you want to then it's not really that good at seven speed if it was faster it would probably be amazing um, as of the other two equipments, like I said, once you have spare coins, then feel free to upgrade these right at the end because passive whenever a friendly malloc attacks and an enemy with taunt against four attack, you're not really going to be attacking a lot of stuff with taunt to make that work. And then this one here, slippery when wet, after one of your characters loses divine shield or frozen, its next ability is free speed faster. Very good if there was enough divine shield support in PvP, which unfortunately there isn't. So definitely go for March of Malox as the first equipment. Slime time and bubbly, kind of you can bounce between the two so that you can use them in PvE and PvP. And then go for Puffer Fish last. Okay, and last but not least for this video, we have Mutinous. So he is another Murloc. Unfortunately, this is the least played Murloc. Um, he doesn't see any 
PvP play. Um, he did back in the past because of Scaly Taunt. Being able to take 8 less damage, gain Taunt, and can't be crit is very good. But we have other units now which actually take 8 less damage and then 7 less damage it is with other units. So you definitely don't really need to be playing this in PvP anymore. PvE as well, unless you have a specific tax chain you're doing with him, um, he's not really used at all. Um, but if you want to upgrade him, the way you upgrade him is you go for the necklace so that he takes as little damage as possible from that then you're going to want to obviously do scaly taunt because you're going to be taunting with him and then you go for the devour attack so that you've actually got an attack to be able to do with this merc and then devour where you eat your lower south murloc you never really use that unless you are trying to do a really hard task where you scale someone up and then eat it like probably one of his own personal tasks and then as of the other two you don't really need to upgrade those until you have the coins at the end so do the necklace scaly devouring dev uh, devoting and then devour so that is the the order you want to do with this one okay and that is it for today that is part one of the fighters priority upgrades i hope this video has helped you guys i will try and chapter this video so that you can jump straight to the mercenary that you're trying to update or upgrade sorry so um if this does help you then please like i said give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that we can get this channel growing a little bit faster than what it is i'd really appreciate it and i will see you in the next video